Greeting Mech Warriors, this is Tam. This is a follow-up video for the Mech Warrior 5 walkthrough. I've got a link below to my general analysis for the whole video, but today I'm going to focus on the Mech Lab and what we learned with it there. So we're just going to jump into the Mech Lab and look at the details of what we can learn. So right away, I'm not a fan of how the Mech beams in, but whatever. But I see that we start with three warnings here in the bottom, the yellow boxes. The first one, you see that we're under tonnage, and we certainly are. This is an Atlas. We're only 63 tons right now. There's a wrench, so I guess it just says that we need repairing to be done on the Atlas, and it's salvage, so that makes sense. And there's an ammunition icon here, which I find a little unusual, because the only ammunition we have, the only ammunition using weapon we have right now is the AMS on the left arm, and the left arm is missing. So, not really sure what it's talking about. Also notice that when it disappears, we'll call that out. Other things right here at the beginning, that says that uh, this mech goes at uh, 48.6 kilometers per hour, which means it's using a 300 engine. We'll look later to see, do we think that's a standard or an XL? So looking else here, here on the, the beginning of the mech lab, you notice how the uh, UX5, the AC20, and the AC10 all weigh the same as they do in MWO, the same tonnage. And notice we have a gap here in the information between tonnage and damage. I think that probably used to have slots back before MWO decided to do the slot sizes rather than actual number of slots that each weapon's going to have. I think maybe you can put heat in there or something like that, but that's fine. It's just it's a noticeable gap in the information they're giving us here. You also notice here between the two weapons, the UAC-5 does 6.9 damage, but it's tier 3. Whereas the Burst Fire AC-5 does 6 damage. It's only a tier 1. So I think that pokes a little of what is a Burst Fire weapon versus regular ACs. Tiering is important. The burst fire is not just an upscale version of the weapon. It's a completely different thing. You have regular ACs, you get AC burst fire, and you have UACs. And they're going to be different things with different rules. So going on from there, you'll notice as we go and look at the burst fire AC-20, it does almost double the damage of the regular AC-20. 23 versus 42, yet they weigh the same. Now there's a big difference here in tierage. The AC-20 over here is a tier 3, whereas the Burst Fire AC-20 here is a tier 5. Apparently that's a big thing. Even though it weighs the same, a lot more damage, higher rate of fire, less heat, and a longer range. So tiering isn't just for one or two of these things. The higher the tier, the better the weapon is, just full stop. But I do have a question here of what this projectile spread means. It's listed as 400. 400 what? Is that 400 centimeters around a central aiming point? At what range? At its maximum range? And I do find it a little weird how projectile speed, they show meters per second, but they don't tell us what the max range is. Do I assume meters? But they don't say. Why not? And you should have that same thing down here, projectile spread as well. So now we'll go ahead and look at the lasers. And right here, I get what they're trying to say here with the rate of fire, but an RPM rounds per minute for a energy weapon is kind of silly, but that's a small thing. But honestly, I don't really like the term rate of fire. I would prefer to cooldown timing, which is what is used on the HUD. In the rest of the video. So now we're going to getting our weapons here, putting in the uh, LRM-15 with Artemis. And one thing to notice, while the description text of the Artemis mentions you know, with improved spread, I don't see a spread number here inside the descriptive box. So again, what does it really mean? when this has improved spread. I would think I would see spread here like I do with the burst fire weapons. And I also wonder how guided are LRMs in MechWarrior 5. 
and MWO, you have to stay focused on the target and keep them locked for the missiles to get there. Are they fire forget now? Kind of like uh, SRMs? Uh, streak missiles? We'll find out. I do like this detailed view, but I think it really shows us something that I didn't think about yesterday that could be a big thing. You see with this loadout that this Atlas, the Atlas K, had to be using an XL300, which is its stock loadout in MWO. Yet, even though it has an XL, it can fit an entire AC-20 in here, which you could not do in MWO. And I don't think the burst fire AC-20 is any smaller. So they've really changed the rules of how these weapon slots work. Even though you have a weapon slot that will be too large, particularly with two tons of ammo, to fit inside a torso with MWO rules on an LFE or an XL engine, it can fit here. Which could be a pretty big change. Now, what does that mean for if a mech is an XL and you lose a side torso? Do you go down? Don't know yet. Another big thing I notice is how they do the slots here. In MWO and Battletech, you've got 12 slots to use in your torsos. You don't get that, it looks like, in this game anymore with the size hard points, how they're doing it now. It looks like the hard point is size and slots at the largest possible weapon you could put in there. For example, we've got the LRM-15 Artemis IV. It only has, it takes four slots, but there's only six slots left in here. The largest possible missile weapon you can put in is the LRM-20 Artemis, and that takes six slots. So it looks like even though we put in something that's smaller, you still only have six other slots to use for storage of other components. So as a different example, let's say we took out this AC-20 and put it in an AC-2, I think you would still only have two slots to use. Yes, you'll save a lot of tonnage, but you don't get that volume back. You don't get extra slots to put other things in there. I like that rule. I think there should be, you should get flexibility with how you want to load your mech, but it shouldn't be for free. It's not like your mechanics going down to Ikea and in, installing more shelving so you have more slots in the right torso to put other things in there. This mech was designed to hold a large ballistic. That's part of how it was made. You can't just willy-nilly change it. The cost of changing this mech would be the same as building a new one from scratch. I like having that constraint. I have to make a decision. If I have a really amazing AC-5 Vorpal plus 5 burst fire AC-5 that I want to use, put it in there. But I don't get it for free. I can't just suddenly have all those extra slots to put other things in there. I only have two slots in the right torso to put things in. I like that. I like being forced to make that decision in a single player game. I can see why they don't do that in MWO. Other points while we're here, looking at the cooling. We have eight single heat sinks. Yeah, on the top left it says the cooling is 1.8. Uh, what's the math about that? Second point, looking at the armor ratings, it looks like it's the same as MWO. You have double armor per structure. But we have weapons here that deal a lot more damage than they do in MWO. That could be weird. Other thing, even though the engine is not listed at all, which so it's not changeable in the Atlas K here, you still have the two slots for the single heat sinks. Now, are these slots dedicated to heat sinks internal to the engine, or do we actually now have four slots in the center torso that we can use? I don't know. We'll find out. Looking more at to this, just as the mech lab in general, I hope they have some dynamics on repairing. Like how in HBS Battletech, you needed to upgrade the ship so you would have more skill you have more tech so you can repair things faster and cheaper. They haven't seen that here in uh, MechWarrior 5, and I hope they have something. I mean, as an example, I wouldn't mind a rule that at the beginning of the game, my mechanics aren't good enough to put smaller weapons in these large slots. 
but if I upgrade them over the game, I can do it. Let's say level zero, they can't do that at all. Level one, I can do a smaller weapon in the large slot, but there's a penalty, either to heat, range, cooldown, whatever. If I upgrade mechanics to level two, I can now downgrade one step, say put a medium in a large with no penalty, but if I try to put in a small and a large, I still have a penalty. Then I upgrade them even more, and I don't have that penalty anymore. Just a little give and take, a reason to put whatever kind of XP into the mech lab that you wouldn't otherwise have to. That's my uh, point here, looking at the mech lab. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Stay tuned for more. Thank you much.